السلام عليكم طلبة المرحلة الثالثة The title of our lecture today is Chest Pain The objectives of the lecture is to know the importance of the chest pain and to learn about the causes or the differentiate diagnosis of the pain Also, we need to know how to analyze or what are the key features in history taking in patients with chest pain and to learn how that clinical signs help us to assess the underlying cause also, we we'll talk a little bit about the initial investigation and at last, at the end of the lecture, we should be able to identify the ischemic chest pain from other causes of chest pain. The subject of chest pain is really important because it's really a common symptom. Many of you, when you are graduate, all of you really will face one patient complaining of chest pain for different causes. So it's very, really a very common symptom. And also, in addition to being common, there is a wide causes or a wide differential diagnosis of that pain. We should be able to differentiate one from each other because some of these are really dangerous and other are mild and just need some reassurance to the patient. So in, in all cases of chest pain, we need to take a detailed history and we need to have a thorough clinical examination and an appropriate subsequent investigation to be able to diagnose the underlying of causes of chest pain. Regarding differential diagnosis or causes of chest pain, to be able to remember and to be able to classify, we need to classify them into two major groups, either central chest pain or peripheral chest pain. The most important cause for central chest pain is the cardiac causes, including myocardial ischemia, that's angina, also myocardial infarction, pericarditis and mitral valve prolapse, and myocarditis. All of these are really a cardiac causes of chest pain. The other important cause for central chest pain is aortic, either aortic dissection or aortic aneurysm. Oesophageal pain also is a central type of chest pain, maybe due to oesophagitis, oesophageal spasm, also what's called mallory wheeze syndrome, which is a syndrome of acute uh, injury to the lower part of oesophagus during severe vomiting, also due to cephageal perforation. Pulmonary embolism, especially if, if acute and massive pulmonary emboli, can cause also central chest pain. Other mediastinal diseases like tumors and malignancy will also cause central chest pain. Still, anxiety and emotion can also be the underlying cause for having the chest pain. Regarding the peripheral causes of chest pain, main causes is due to lungs and the pleura uh, diseases. Example, pulmonary infarction. That's to say, following a pulmonary embolism, there will be infarction of part of the lung causing acute pleuritic like pain and it is usually peripheral. Pneumonia also, especially lobar pneumonia, can cause pleurisy and this will produce peripheral chest pain. Pneumothorax also is a very important cause of acute sharp chest pain affecting the patient. Malignancy, tuberculosis, and other collective tissue disorders all might cause pleurisy and uh, peripheral chest pain. The other important cause for having lateral or peripheral chest pain is musculoskeletal causes, like osteoarthritis, also rib fractures or rib injury, acute vertebral fractures, costochondritis, costochondritis, I mean, also intercostal muscle injury, and some cases of epidemic myalgia, which is due to underlying viral infection like Coxsackie B virus. Neurological causes also very important, especially disc prolapse, and very important also to remember the herpes zoster, which is a varicella zoster infection, uh, later presentation, secondary presentation as a herpes zoster, and this will cause uh, like a vesicle on the uh, skin of the chest wall in the affected site. Also what's called thoracic outlet syndrome can cause peripheral lateral chest pain. So what are the key features or what are the main points in the history taking to be able to analyze a chest pain to be, to be able to reach the underlying cause? First, as you know, all pain analysis, including any pain anywhere in the, in the, uh, in the body, whether abdominal, whether chest, whether uh, even headache, any, any uh, type of pain, we, there are several points, you may take it before, uh, how to analyze pain. First of all, the site and the radiation and the onset of the pain, 
the character of the pain, the precipitating factors, and the relieving factors all are very important to be able to analyze a case of pain. Regarding chest pain, the same will be applied. First of all, a thing that will help us to diagnose the underlying causes is the site and radiation of pain. The myocardial ischemia pain, usually related, as we say previously, in the center of the chest, and the usual radiation is to the neck, jaw, and arms. While myocarditis and pericarditis pain lift felt also uh, sorry retrosternally, but to the lift of the sternum, or sometimes can be even felt in the left or right shoulder. Aortic dissection pain typically felt in the center of the chest and there is typical radiation through to the back. Mediastinal tumors and esophageal disease also can cause central chest pain. In cases of pleurisy or lung disorders, the pain usually started over left anterior chest chest or sometimes right chest and radiating laterally and this may, as we say may be due to pleural disease or lung disorders also musculoskeletal pain usually is started laterally or sometimes anxiety can also cause peripheral or lateral chest pain mitral valve prolapse is also important cause of chest pain and usually it causes some atypical pain mainly felt in the left mammary region so as you say, the side of the pain help us a lot to differentiate the underlying cause. The second important point to analyze the pain is the character of the pain. Regarding a pleurisy, which is an inflammation of the pleura, the pain usually described as a sharp chest pain, sometimes described as a stabbing in nature or catching pain, which is aggravated by deep breathing or by coughing. Similar to that is the pain of pericarditis or myocarditis, also to described as sharp pain and also catching pain, increasing by inspiration and coughing, but it also be increased on lying flat and on swallowing, and usually relieved by leaning forward. So the pleurisy pain and pericarditis pain are similar together, but the difference is that in pericarditis, the pain usually also aggravated by lying flat and by swallowing and relieved by leaning forward. The pain of myocardial ischemia, previously discussed by Dr. Jasim, usually felt as dull pain, but also different description can be uh, applied by the patient. Some of them describe it as const constricting, or choking, or heaviness, or squeezing, or crushing, or burning, or aching, or even just a discomfort rather than a pain. So many descriptions of ischemic chest pain patient can feel. Some, one of the causes of myocardial ischemia is the angina. Angina also can have uh, some types, we can also talk about it. The usual angina usually occurs during exertion, that's to say not following exertion, but during exertion, and it should be relieved by rest, that's to say when patient walking for a distance, he feels the pain during walking and he obliged to stop to relieve the pain and this rest will relieve the pain. Also it may be relieved by taking some lingual, sublingual tablets, that's the nitrate, which are coronary vasodilators. Also, during putting the, uh, after a short time of putting the sublingual tablets, the pain starts to be relieved. The angina pain also may be aggravated by taking a large heavy meal, also in cold wind. There is another description of another type of angina pain, which is called the crescendo or unstable angina. In this type of angina, the pain is either occurring at rest or it may be aggravated by a very little uh, exertion less than the patient used to have before. The other type of also unstable angina is the decupitus angina, we call it decupitus angina, which is pain, chest pain, induced by lying down. All of, all of the three descriptions are types of angina or due to myocardial ischemia. In addition to that, also as you learn, acute myocardial infarction will produce severe central chest pain radiating to the shoulders and can be described as in the, in the starting of the slide, either constricting, choking, heaviness, burning, crushing, etc. But usually the pain of myocardial infarction uh, takes longer duration than the angina pain and it may be not relieved 
by uh, rest or taking sublingual tablets. This picture is typical of patients with acute ischemic chest pain. As you notice, he just come out of restaurant, so he just take a heavy meal, and it is uh, have this uh, lines of of uh, cold wind facing the patient, and he have some heavy bag in his hand so this caused more exertion to the patient and he described the pain as you notice in the right-sided picture either by putting all his hands over the chest feeling like heaviness or he squeeze his hand over the chest feeling like squeezing pain or he put both hands together over the chest describing a crushing chest pain and the diagrammatic picture below as you notice this is the side of the pain which is really central, but it is radiating where to the left shoulder and also to the up to the neck and to the lower jaw and also to the left arm. The musculoskeletal pain usually it is regarding the character of musculoskeletal pain, usually it is variable in sight. Each time patient describe different sight. And usually uh, this pain is not going with any type of the pain described. It's not a pleurisy, it's not pericarditis pain, it is not pain of ischemia. And so it is bizarre, uh, bizarre description of the pain. And this pain also may be varied with special posture or movement. That's say when I lean downward, I feel the pain, or when I tilt to the right or, the, or to the left, I feel the pain, which is due to musculoskeletal causes. The other important thing, help us, in analytic case of chest pain is the onset of pain, how the pain started. The myocardial infarction pain usually take several minutes or longer to develop to its maximal intensity. So the pain started as a low grade pain, then gradually increasing till reaching the maximum intensity. The angina pain as well usually builds up gradually in a proportion to the intensity of exertion. So the patient when have starting the exertion, the pain is start to be little, then by having more exertion, the pain is increasing. So it's also gradual. When the, when the patient is a pain having ha, happening after exertion, not during exertion, this is, a, is a, due usually to musculoskeletal pain or maybe psychological in origin. There are some types of chest pain that start very sudden. So it is starting from the beginning as severe pain, especially the pain of aortic dissection. This aortic dissection, as you remember, we say it is a central chest pain radiating back to the back of the patient, and usually it is severe and felt as tearing pain. Sudden, acute, severe, tearing pain radiate to the back is the secretion of aortic dissection. Also, act acute massive pulmonary embolization, PE, also can cause acute severe sudden chest pain. Pneumothorax pain also it is sudden, but remember it is usually felt lateral rather than central. So the pain may be gradual as in ischemia, may be acute onset as in aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, and pneumothorax. The other important thing that help us to diagnose the cause of underlying chest pain is the associated features. The most important group of associated features is due to autonomic disturbances. So the patient with the pain may have sweating, nausea, and vomiting. And even he may feel impending death, like feeling. These types of autonomic disturbances usually accompanying pain of myocardial infarction, also massive pulmonary embolism, and aortic dissection. All of these three types of chest pain really are very critical and they are dangerous and they are life threatening types of pain. And usually, as we say, it is associated with anotromic disturbances, including sweating, nausea, vomiting, and feeling of impending death. The other important associated feature is breathlessness. Again, breathlessness can accompany pa patient having acute myocardial ischemia or angina, usually also associated with breathlessness. In addition to that, respiratory causes of pain like pleurisy or pneumonia or other types of, of, or, of pulmonary infarction all also associated with breathlessness.
So the associated feature of borotlitinase can accompany both myocardial ischemia or respiratory causes. When the patient have myocarditis or pericarditis, he may also describe features of viral infection. Regarding esophageal pain, usually it mimic the, the anginal pain. Sometimes it's very dif dif difficult to do to differentiate bet between both of them. But usually this pain is more on dur during or during uh, taking lying flat or supine position position, or also during eating, and may also associated with some difficulty in swallowing. That's to say dysphagia. So the esophageal pain is very similar to chest pain of ischemia. It is central really, but the difference here it is aggravated by lying flat when the, the content of the stomach regurge back to the esophagus and cause uh, the esophageal pain, and also it is related to uh, some types of taking uh, certain types of milk. The anxiety also may induce chest pain, but usually associated also with the breathlessness and also feeling of tightness in the throat and also perioral tingling. In this case, the patient also would describe that he has some emotional distress and he looks to us as anxious. Although we should remember that even serious causes of chest pain like myocardial infarction also usually associated with anxiety. So please don't put the cause of chest pain as a simple anxiety or psychological unless you exclude all other important causes of that chest pain. That was regarding the history taking. Now we will discuss the clinical signs that help us to assess the type or cause of chest pain. So it's very important in any patient with chest pain to have a good cardiac examination and respiratory examination. For example, we give some example of that. If we notice a patient with uh, acute chest pain, central chest pain, mimic that of, of uh, myocardial infarction or myocardial uh, ischemia, we should examine carefully the cardiovascular system. So we may, we may notice an increased jugular venous pressure, the JVP, will be increased in patients who have acute myocardial ischemia, and also it can be seen in patients with acute pulmonary embolism. In patients who have acute central chest pain, we should also examine the lower limbs for evidence of what's called deep vein venous thrombosis. You should know that when the patient have deep vein thrombosis, which is presented as a swelling and redness of one of the limbs, of lower limbs especially, this thrombus may dislodge back to the venous system, to the right side of the heart, then it will go up to the pulmonary uh, artery branches and cause acute pulmonary embolization. So if you suspect patient with acute chest pain, is it due to pulmonary embolization, please examine the lower limbs of the patient for evidence of deep vein thrombosis. Also, other cause of acute chest pain, as you learn, is the pneumothorax, which cause acute severe lateral chest pain. In this case, the signs of pneumothorax will be evident by respiratory system examination. We will have uh, also here, in this case, hyperresonant area, different between the right and left part of the chest. In addition to other signs of pneumothorax, you will going to learn it when you take respiratory diseases. Also, during respiratory examination, sometimes you may hear special signs like bronchial breathing or crackles, also called crepitations. This indicates that the underlying cause is possibly due to respiratory tract infection like pneumonia. In cases of pericarditis, if we, if we examine the heart, we may notice uh, what's called a friction rub. This is a special sound uh, felt like uh, as if you are uh, fric uh, so we have two leathers with with a friction between them. It will give, give us a special sound called pericardial rub. If we have a patient with a description of pericarditis pain and we hear this friction rub, this will, will help us a lot to diagnose the pericarditis. Also, we need to examine carefully the pulse of the patient and look to the general appearance as, for example, cases of Marfan syndrome. That's to say they have long uh, uh, upper and lower limbs and uh, in, in compared to the trunk and we, they have also special features we will learn it later 
and we will also listen for early diastolic murmur due to aortic regurgitation. If you notice, these signs all indicate underlying aortic dissection. So again, if the patient have acute, severe central chest pain radiating to the back, tearing in description, you, sh you should suspect aortic dissection and you go to examine the pulse of the patient, you will find uh, different pulses between right and left uh, radial pulses and blood pressure difference also between, between right and left arm and the patient may get morphanoid appearance and we, we may hear a murmur due to underlying aortic regurgitation. In cases of pleurisy, we may hear a pleural rub and also some patient with musculoskeletal pain, they may have a local tenderness on the chest wall. So good history taking and good thorough clinical examination will help us a lot to diagnose different causes of chest pain. After taking a good history and having a good clinical examination, then we will choose the investigations. The most important investigations in cases of chest pain, we should take a chest x-ray for all of these patients to exclude underlying lung disease or to exclude underlying precardial effusion or underlying musculoskeletal disease like rib fracture, etc. ECG also is mandatory to be done to all patients with acute chest pain to exclude underlying ischemia or underlying arrhythmia or underlying changes due to pericarditis, etc. Also, the most important biomarkers to take to send to the lab is taking the serum troponin, which is, as you learned in the previous lecture by Dr. Jassim, it is elevated usually in cases of acute myocardial ischemia, especially myocardial infarction. And what's called also the test of D-dimer, now it is very widely done in, in, in the dilemma of, of COVID-19, which is indicating underlying thrombosis. So if you suspect a pulmonary embolization due to D-vein thrombosis, you should do the D-dimer test, which may be elevated in these cases. After taking this all investigations, thorough history, and a good clinical examination, now we should be able to differentiate the different causes of chest pain. So the last slide will help us to be able to differentiate the pain that is due to ischemic cardiac pain or is it uh, other non-cardiac chest pain. So in summary, this will help us, as you see, the location in cases of ischemic chest pain, usually it is central and diffu or diffuse, where in non-cardiac chest pain, it is usually peripheral or and localized without radiation. In cases of radiation also, in ischemic chest pain, as we learn, it will radiate up to the jaw, to the neck, to the shoulders, and to the left arm. While in cases of non-cardiac chest pain, they may, there may be no radiation or other types of radiation, like for example, lateral radiation. Character of the pain, in case of ischemic cardiac chest pain, usually, as we describe, it felt as tightening, squeezing, choking, crushing, etc. While in cases of non-cardiac chest pain, it is either described as sharp pain in case of pleurisy or stabbing also in cases of pleurisy and, uh, and pericarditis or catching. The precipitating factors also differs between different causes. In cases of uh, chest pain due to myocardial uh, pain or, or ischemia, usually it is a precip precipitated by exertion or emotion while in other causes of chest pain, it may be spontaneous without underlying precipitating factors, and it is usually not related to exertion, but may be provoked by posture, by breathing, or by uh, felt, feeling as tenderness on palpation. The relieving factor is also different. In cases of acute ischemic chest pain, usually it relieved by rest or by taking, as we describe, the nitrates that the sublingual, sublingual tablets. While in cases of other causes of chest pain rather than cardiac, usually it is not relieved by rest uh, or it may be uh, slow, only slowly relieved by rest or not by uh, taking the sublingual tablets. Associated features, the cases of acute chest pain due to myocardial ischemia usually associated with the breathlessness and also as we told you, it may associate with autonomic features in cases of acute severe uh, myocardial infarction or uh, aortic dissection. While associated features in other causes of, of chest pain rather than ischemic is due to respiratory 
جي اي تي لوكوموتور اور سايكولوجيكال فيتشرز ذات از كوزينج ذات اندرلاينج بين فور اكزامبل ان كيسز اوف ريسبيراتوري كوزز يوجوالي اسوشيتد ويز كف اور ويزز ان كيسز اوف جي اي تي ات ماي اسوشيتد ويز نوزيا ويز اسيديتي اور فوميتينج ان كيسز اوف لوكوموتور اور ديزيزز ماي اسوشيتد ويز سبيشال موفمنتس ان كيس اوف سايكولوجيكال ذا بيشنت ماي ديسكرايب سيرتن ستريس اور سايكولوجيكال بروبلمز سو ذس تيبل ريلي هيلب اس ا ليتل بيت تو ديفرنشيات كوزز اوف اسكيميا and causes of other non-cardiac chest pain. Thank you very much for your listening.